Hey, this is Vaughn Vernon. Welcome to my Design Accelerator tutorial. Let's look into Events First Discovery and Modeling. We're going to see how driving with events can help discover an overall system process, and we're going to take this to tactical modeling. How does this all work together? Stick with me, I think you're going to have fun. First of all, let's look into event storming. I've been using event storming since Alberto Brandolini introduced it at my IDDD workshop. I don't know, I think maybe my second workshop that was held in Europe, second one ever. I invited Alberto to join me there and co-teach for half a day or so. And when he did, he introduced event storming. It wasn't even called event storming at the time. He later named it event storming, and I kept using it from that point forward. That was in 2013, the spring of 2013. So it's been quite a long time since I've been using it, and I'd like to introduce you to the various aspects of event storming. First of all, let's look at the modeling elements that are available. In event storming, the primary element of interest is an event and a number of events that are used across a timeline to capture the things that have happened in a process. So we're primarily interested in events and that's why this is called events first discovery and modeling. So we start out with events, we focus on events, and actually many of these other elements that are available and others are of less importance to us than events. As we start out, we are first using events and we are focused on the events that, ha that happen over a timeline. We will add in things such as policies and user roles, but the first step is what's known as big picture modeling. And the overall idea of big picture modeling is to capture a process in an overall system. The additional modeling elements are command, policy, aggregate, user role, process, view, and hotspot. There are others, but let's just focus on these. They are the most useful as we model. A command is an imperative. Actually, a command is what causes an event to occur. But many of the commands are implied. So if you have an event, you can assume that a command caused it. Not always, but very generally so, that will be the case. So you have an imperative such as do this, and the imperative leads to an event. The imperative will generally happen on an aggregate. You can think of this at a high level as an entity or even just data, but the data has behavior associated with it, and that is what carries out a command. So you can think of command, aggregate, and then an outgoing event. But I'm displaying events first here because it is event storming and that is what we are primarily focused on. And everything that we do in this is events first, even down to the tactical modeling that it will follow a design level storming activity. Policy. A policy is a set of rules or constraints and these rules or constraints are applied to an aggregate and it can also be used for branching. So after an event occurs, you might have a policy that says, based on this event and perhaps the overall state of the system, a branch will occur to this sub-timeline or this sub-timeline or something similar to that and the policy is then used to show a direction that will follow an event, or it could be a business rule that is applied on an aggregate to determine which event will occur out of that aggregate. Another modeling element is the user role. A user role does just as it implies here that it represents a user in a role within the system that's being modeled. A user role could be identified by a persona, could be identified by just the role name itself, but what happens when a user is involved at this point 
And what does that role imply about the overall process? Well, we're going to call that out, make it explicit instead of implicit, and we're going to name the role that causes something to happen. We don't always need to know the role because sometimes the role is general. It could be a number of different roles that will cause an event to occur, but sometimes it's useful to show that a very specific role is involved in causing an event. A process is much like a policy in that this would be a process such as a process manager or a saga, and it's a policy in the sense that it has a set of rules and constraints for how when an event occurs, for example, a command will emit from the process to cause the next event to occur. That's just one example of it. A view is a set of data that can be queried. So you can think of this as a query, but the query results in some set of data that is the view that will be seen, for example, on the user's user interface, on the browser, or in a rich client. So think of the view as a set of data that will be the result of a specific query. A hotspot is used to recognize an area of the model where there are differences of opinion or there needs to be more research. It's hot because more attention needs to be given to it. We need to mark this hotspot with a very specific name and call out that there needs to be more investigation into it. It could be that we're missing a domain expert in the conversation and we aren't going to learn what the actual details of the question or the dispute that's been raised here but instead of going down the rabbit trail and not understanding but just taking guesses we're going to mark this as an area that needs more investigation more attention and we're going to move on so that we can continue to model past this point. So those are the primary elements that will be used in event storming. Again, there are other ones, but I'm not going to get into those today. To start a big picture event storming effort, remember that it's named event storming. I like to compare this to a literal rainstorm, a thunderstorm uh, with lightning and so forth. Now, when you are in a literal storm or you're inside and you're looking out and there's a literal storm, can you anticipate where the next raindrop is going to fall? Can you anticipate when the wind will blow, where a lightning bolt will strike and how long the thunder will last from a single lightning strike? No, we can't predict any of those things. So when you're starting off a storming effort, you don't want to focus on trying to get a timeline correct. You just simply need to understand what are the possible things that could happen. You're going to storm on this. And so everybody involved in the effort could be 10 people, 20 people, 30 people. You got to be careful that you don't get too many people involved. Those who really don't have any direct impact on the event storming effort. Although you can have some observers, you want the right individuals, the individuals who have the questions and the individuals who have the answers and everybody should have some questions and everybody should have some answers to contribute to the overall process. So you're going to start off just giving everybody a pen and a sticky pad or in an electronic online version of this, you're going to allow everybody to submit some events into the overall storming and it's going to be unpredictable, it's going to be messy and you just want to have everybody contribute some ideas of what could happen without any reference to a timeline before, after, this happens always, this happens before and so forth. So just think about storming. That's the very first step. After you've gathered together a number of events, then you can start forming a timeline. And as you can see, this timeline starts out with a specific user role. In this case, everything here is abstract. I'm not giving a concrete example. I'm just showing you uh, basically how you put together a timeline using abstract modeling elements. So we have some user role that causes an event. The event 
has a policy associated with the outcome and this could lead to one or more events occurring from this and depending on a policy here we could have a, a specific kind of view generated this would be for example a projection from a cqrs perspective so this is the command model here and this is a query model and an outcome from that this view would be then used by a different user role or perhaps the same user role and the outcome from uh, that would be another event with a policy and maybe our timeline splits again here based on some outcome and as you can see we have some hot spots here because we're not sure about the actual business rule here what should happen does this always happen does it happen conditionally at what frequency does it happen so you get the idea that after some time you've got your overall model built up and by the way this is quite small compared to what a typical system model would be but it's all that we can see here in this particular case but you can imagine that there would be a lot of additional events things that happen across the timeline this gives you some idea though of how the model might be put together can you have commands here you can again they're likely unnecessary but you could show that a command is provided by or submitted by this user role which causes an event can you show the aggregate exists as well yes you can but again it may be unnecessary to have that but you could show that an aggregate exists here as it receives the command it emits an event and we have a policy that will cause different events to occur based on the business rules or constraints given in the policy so i pointed out before that this model that we're working on here is a big picture event storming so we're looking at the big picture of a business process across a system on the other hand there's also design level event storming and the idea of design level event storming is where for example you can drill into a single event and derive what has actually occurred here so before I showed you that you could show a command and an aggregate where that command is being executed and an event that's being emitted from that aggregate well I've collapsed back to a big picture storming here without that extra level of detail but when now examining this big picture storming at a design level you can derive from the single event that in a lot of cases in most cases in the case where we have a user role that is causing an event this event is actually caused by a command being submitted by the user from their user interface and that command is being executed against an aggregate and the aggregate emits the domain event note too that at the design level a command may have to pass a policy as in pass some kind of business rules constraints before the aggregate will fulfill the command by fully executing it and then emitting an event so this is where you can apply business rules and constraints within the aggregate and you can give these a specific name the idea behind design level storming is just that it takes us to the point where we are fairly close to a tactical implementation model so here's an example of the aggregate that we're currently working on it is some aggregate type it has some kind of state and it has a command handler well this particular command aligns with this command again this is very abstract i'm not naming the command the policy the aggregate type or the event i'm just showing you fundamentally this is the kind of tactical model that you'll have so the command takes some number of parameters we're going to ask a policy if this command will pass with the parameters and if so we're going to apply the event with the id of the state of the aggregate and the parameters in general that is roughly how a tactical model 
can be implemented from a design level event storming. On my next episode, my next Design Accelerator tutorial, I will show you a concrete example of how this can actually work and why events first is so important because what we'll do in the next example is we will extend an event sourced aggregate. We'll extend the event source type and we will make this an event sourced aggregate and I'll show you how that works in my example. I hope you've enjoyed this today. Thank you for attending, for watching my Design Accelerator tutorial. It's been brought to you by my company Kalele. You can find us on the web at kalele.io slash iddd dash workshop. And you can uh, learn there about our IDDD workshop, our consulting training project work that we can do to help you out. Please look into it. And don't forget that if you like my Design Accelerator tutorials, remember to like and subscribe to my channel. I look forward to having you with me next time. Until then, take care.